This week on AwesomeCast, Norm Hillsman joins us to kick off a pod camp Pittsburgh with a party. We talk about apps getting bought, what rights do you have as App Store users, piracy in video games, again on the App Store, all this, much more AwesomeCast. The awesome cast 111. We're here kicking off once again. I am Sorgatron. Or, no, that's the wrong show. Michael Sorg. That's my real name. Hi. How many times are you going to fuck up this intro? That's all right. We're doing this. Rob De La Creta is on the line. Oh, Helmetless man. this week. How you doing, sir? Uh, I'm good. I am, uh, you know, this is kind of the slow time of year for me, uh, work development stuff. So it feels weird to not be hectic. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I have meetings and things to go to, and and today uh, we cracked a case of beer at, like, 4 o'clock. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it happens. I, I wish I could do what you do. Yeah, you know. And it's uh, it's National Tequila Day. I don't know if you knew. Oh, did not know that. Actually, Cheers. I don't know if it's national, because tequila is not from the U.S. <laughs> today. But, hey, it's tequila day. So um, you impo- should have tequila or margaritas or something, which is imp- what I will be doing shortly after the show. It's Pass. imported uh, tequila day? Mm, yes. Yes, yes. On the couch, as usual, as you heard just a second ago, is not... There he is. Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com, the video game site for all your video game needs. Do, you, do, stop staring. Stop. <laughs> say say so, something. So no, that, that doesn't work for the audio. <laughs> <laughs> That was an all vid- video intro. Okay. <laughs> Hello, greetings, people of the interwebs. Oh, God. <laughs> nice. I am your lord and master. All right. Wow. Rob, stop talking yeah. back. You will bow to me eventually. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. It will. It will. No. You are unaware of this at this time. That's why I told you. <laughs> but eventually... <laughs> what? You will all bow down before me. Yeah, I don't know. About, oh, you got, you got a bell. You found a bell. Great. Also with us tonight is Norm Hulesman from. He's the marketing project manager of itooksy.com at Mr. How's it going? Hey, how's it going this week, sir? Great. Thanks for having me back on. Excellent. Excellent. Norm. Norm, however, I don't see ever bowing before me. <laughs> I think his will is too strong for me to to break. I'm too Rob, strong and silent. Yeah, Rob can be broken for a good beer. I don't know about that. Uh, oh, I do. <laughs> well, first, before we move on, since we got Norm here, uh, let's talk about um, PodCamp Pittsburgh. The kickoff party is going to be tomorrow night as of, uh, as of this recording. May will be passed. Depends on when you viewed this, but I'm sure you're going to be hear- hearing a lot about it on Twitter and everything the next few days. Uh, Norm, what are we trying to accomplish with this kickoff party? So this is the first time we've ever had a, a official kickoff party, uh, and the idea is, um, yeah, everybody loves to celebrate PodCamp, loves to get together. So um, for all of the volunteers that have um, joined us in the past and want to want to get involved this year, uh, we're going to have the ki- a kickoff party to just kind of like kick off the year of PodCamp Pittsburgh Seven. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, you know, we're going to get together at the Round Corner Cantina in uh, on Butler Street in Lawrenceville. Uh, 6 to 8 p.m. tomorrow night, and that's Wednesday, July 25th, uh, if anybody needs that reference. And uh, we're going to be in the back patio. Uh, they've um, uh, We've got uh, a great new um, mission statement and philosophy for PodCamp this year, and we're going to let everybody know about it. And um, I'm really excited to, um, you know, just, like, start, start doing PodCamp. Um, interesting. Interesting segue. I wanted to jump in earlier when we when Rob was getting introduced, but I thought that would be too rude. <laughs> it's nice that it's Tequila Day uh, today because you know the Round Corner does have a nice variety of tequila, including uh, I'm sure everyone's heard of the the worm situation in a bottle of tequila. They have, but the Round Corner has a bottle that has a scorpion in it, and if you finish Ooh. the bottle, if you order the last shot of that um, bottle, then you get to eat the scorpion that's their uh, policy so we'll see if anyone eats scorpion also um round corner has an amazing uh bar with uh two two sets of liquor shelves and i think that it would be the most amazing place to do 
multiple 649s. Ooh. I, uh, I would like to clarify the uh, tequila you're referring to is actually a mezcal. Oh, yeah? Just, that's just to let you know. Okay. Just to be a nerd. So, someone tequila, someone, nerd. someone needs to eat a scorpion tomorrow. <laughs> nerd or no nerd? Chachi definitely needs to come. What? What? No, what? Never mind. Just uh, drink whatever we put in front of you when you show up. Okay? I am just... I am... All I'm... Uh, I would like to take a moment out of this show to tell you that if you're not reading text from dog.tumblr.com, as, <laughs> as you, you <laughs> are failing at life. Is that what you were doing just now? Yes. Text well, from dog.com. Well, Rob likes to send me, uh, send me funny stuff during the show to make me laugh when someone else is talking. Like, that's Rob's thing. That's usually when I'm telling you a story and asking your opinion or you don't know what I'm talking about. Exactly. because Rob sent you something. Yes. And he sent me a, a text from Dog, and so I went to the website to see what I had missed, because it's the greatest website on Tumblr. On Tumblr? Nice. The greatest website on Tumblr. Yep. Uh, okay. Sure. All right, well, that was an ad that we didn't get paid for. There you go. There you go. Um, well, hey, this is the awesome cast uh, where we still don't get paid for in general. Um, but uh, this is where we talk tech uh, banter about apps and social media and the internets and technology and just have fun um we're here live every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com you guys can join us in the chat room and see what's going on there chime in you, yourselves uh join us on twitter at awesomecast you can also drop us a line check us out at awesomecast.com for all past episodes um and sherry links and stuff like that uh we're on facebook we're on google plus we're actually using that a lot more thanks to you hootsuite for updating google plus abilities so i can use that a lot easier um and uh is there anything else oh hey we're on itunes roku <laughs> blip tv youtube and stitcher you're right there Josh. <laughs> oh man <laughs> sorry <laughs> what the hell? you can't do that you can't audibly laugh at something and not tell anybody i can because <laughs> i got yelled at for giving advertising time to something that isn't paying us so it's text from dog is what it is we all know why he's laughing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay, I guess we can assume that from here on. All right, let's get right into it. I got a, uh, actually got a Google Plus from uh, Matt Weller, Nero, uh, who's uh, 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 been a uh, longtime listener to the show. Um, updating us on the Ouya that we've talked about, the Linux. Uh, <laughs> she's still laughing over there off camera. I read a new one. <laughs> Stop reading that. Read the stories. I did. Follow along, Chachi. I Follow did. along. I did. It's okay. <laughs> so the Ouya, of course, is doing insane with their uh, their funding and everything like that. Um, I think it finally slowed down at did, like five million dollars. It finally slowed down to maybe a few thousand dollars a day at this point. I'm sure. Uh, but this is the Linux based game system. I'm sorry, the Android. Well, that's true too. But it's the Android based uh, game system that's been uh, ripping up Kickstarter lately. Um, well, he says on he he, he puts to us on Google Plus. Uh, in case you're not a backer and didn't see this, the bigger name backers and the production team seem to be naming themselves uh, to help push this even more, which amusingly flies in the face of what the detractors have to say. Uh, I think we're talking about like like developers not getting behind it, I guess, uh, because it is such a low <laughs> such a, a new platform and everything like that uh, but yeah for this one uh they these guys behind uh the the human El element game uh, at, at human element game .com, uh they are going to be the first exclusive on the ouya and there's a little video there of them talking about what they're doing and how they're going to get people involved leading up to this. So that's pretty That's pretty cool. So they're, they're getting exclusives. And, you know, we've already said right out of the gate they had Minecraft on board uh, to make sure to provide for it. Um, so, yeah, he, uh, here it is. Ooh, yeah, uh, gamers will get the first access to, to this. Um, so is this... Granted, it's not like an Activision or anything like that. But still, this is developers getting on board with this and, and, and really kind of dedicating to this platform. Well, first off, let me just begin by saying that I don't think they had any detractors. They're up to $5 million <laughs> in Kickstarter Well, funds. I mean, well, I've been talking about the questions that, that even you, like, you pose on Insert Coin to begin. Is there room for another console? Will developers, will anybody get behind this? I think we solved that question of will anybody get behind this because at least uh, 42,000 people have gotten behind this well, at this point. I mean, at the time, it had just started. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, 
at the at the time I posted that article, the the Kickstarter had literally just started. Mm-hmm. So I mean that was a legitimate question. I think the Kickstarter itself has proven that people got behind it. Yeah, at least um, let's see. According to this, it uh, looks like at least fifty five thousand uh, systems will be in the in the hands of people by uh, by March when it launches. Another thing you have to look at though is that that's fifty five thousand people. Yeah. In comparison to the millions of other major consoles sold. Of course, of course. So I mean, but for a new at, console, at what like that, point? At what point do you can you honestly say that a, a system has broken into an otherwise closed arena? Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if it would make that. Maybe it doesn't need to because this is something that doesn't have the big uh, backing of of a Microsoft or a Sony, and also doesn't have the marketing budget of those yet so yet you know at at this rate maybe that's what they'll put the rest of their millions of dollars into um but uh you know i think it's got a good start it's got a really good start for for a small startup like this and it's got the guys behind it uh rob what do you know they could oh go ahead norm they could even get bought out by sony or microsoft you know this could be you know startup move to to become a next gen console that gets picked up by one of them yeah yeah. Uh, you know, so, you know, and I'm looking at the PlayStation and how annoying it is to use and, you know, their recent problems. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody, you know, if they, they easily would pick this up if it may, if, if they have a really good thing going on. Or, you know, maybe there's somebody else who wants to get in the game that isn't one of the big players like Blizzard or, you know, another like Apple even, you know, some, somebody who, who has, you know, something some some reason to put a stake in the ground in the console you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. could certainly um you know even amazon facebook yeah i don't know it's yeah. not out of the question well and that's yeah that's definitely not outside of the the realm of possibility because we already have sony bought uh gaikai which is kind of like on live that you can do like you can play like demos of mass effect 3 like in your browser streaming um which has been interesting um so, but but apparently Sony bought them for the server technology. I don't think we're going to see much integration with PlayStation Three from the way they're they're putting it over. And uh, they're just like, yeah, we just like they we just like their server management and we want that technology. So, but you never know. I mean, that could be just a smokescreen for maybe that'll be a big part of PlayStation Four is we don't even have to install games on there. Like I would have loved to see On Live pop up as like an app on the Xbox. You know, we're already seeing it in TVs. So. But, um, I don't know, what do you think uh, there, Rob? Um, well, uh, the whole detractor thing, I think, is, like, a, a non-issue. Like, anything new is going to have people who are going to say it's going to fail. Yeah, yeah. Like if, if I say I'm going to come out with a new table, people are going to tell me it's going to be crappy. Those You're going to fail, exist. Rob. You're going to fail. The table you, is yeah, fine. Right? You and your table not fail. A, not a big deal. But, it, you know, like Chachi <laughs> was saying, and like we've always said, Kickstarter is not just a way to raise money. It's a way to gauge interest. And I'd say the fact that the Oya has set so many records on Kickstarter is a pretty good stand that um, at the very least, you know, they're going to put out a whole buttload of consoles and get a little bit of attention. And even if that attention just means that another uh, hardware developer in the same arena, sort of like uh, it would make sense for like HTC to, to gear up to put something like this together. Um, they might look at this more seriously and say, you know, this worked out pretty well. Maybe this is something that we should look into or, like uh, you and Norm were suggesting, like uh, an acquisition sort of thing, or even an acquisition for talent, or what? Like, there's a lot of possibility that could come out of this, and we'll see what happens. And it's cheap enough. Well, so. I, I think if any, if anything happens along the acquisition line, it will be someone buying that company. I don't think, I, I, I don't think with as well as it's done on Kickstarter that someone will try to do what they're doing. Well, uh, like I, that doesn't make any sense. Like, well, what do you I don't. Mean? I, I think it's too early for other companies to try to flood this market. Is what I'm saying. Well, the market. First off, the market doesn't exist. Right. Mm-hmm. Secondly, the Apple TV exists and will evolve to something else at some point. But I guarantee, because this exists, there's a division inside companies like Samsung deciding <laughs> whether or not this is a viable market. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 wheels are already rolling. The question is, are are they going to sit and watch this happen? Are they going to try and throw something into the wrench while it's happening, or are they going to wait for it to fizzle out and then jump on it and see if they can do it better? 
Yeah, yeah. And, and Sonic's even saying in the chat room, sometimes it's just a buy and bury type of deal. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, we're, we're, like, we're be, seeing, I mean, like you were suggesting, like, Sony or Microsoft getting into it. Yeah. Sony or Microsoft could get into it just to shut them up. Yeah, yeah, just to, just to get rid of that competition, that, that other possibility. Yeah, uh, be like, well, you know, you raise $5 out, million dollars on Kickstarter, you put all your units out, here's $10 million, project, and now you don't exist. What are they obligated to through Kickstarter? So, and are you saying, what are they obligated to if they got bought out, like, before they, they did it? I think, the, yeah. I think they have to deliver on their promises. Yeah, um, I, th- I think the Kickstarter contract is that they will have to deliver on their promises, or everybody gets their money back is the other option. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, they could they you know, they kind of bought out and say, hey, that's a great idea. We we want it, and then they give everybody back. Well, you know, really nobody's given them money yet. They're still sitting there. You know, nobody's yeah. credit card has been drawn until uh, I think they have twenty five days left. Lots I checked. Um, holy crap. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, someone can completely buy them, mothball it, give her, you know, cut off everybody's uh, uh, thing, and and that's it. Um, well, somebody else said that that got acquired. Uh, that's a good segue. Um, that's been kind of a big deal this week. Uh, anybody here use Sparrow? Uh, I did for a minute, and my developer uh, used it quite a bit, and now he's not going to be able to use it anymore because <laughs> development has ceased because they were bought by Google, and uh, it looks like this is one of those acquisitions for talent, not acquisition for product. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Sparrow is dead in the water, and or dead in the air, as it were. Aww. Oh, now, uh, now Sparrow's a phone, a phone uh, uh, app, right? Like, or, no. or is it everything? Sparrow's an OS X application. Okay, okay. Um, it is a, it's a Gmail application. It, it's built for Gmail. Has all the labels and things like that sort of flexibility built into it. It's ideal if you have multiple Gmail accounts that you want to manage, and you sort of like the um, the combination of. The, the Google features that are built into Gmail as well as the functionality of having an actual mail client. It's fantastic and it's legitimately the best. Like uh, the Mozilla applications are awful. Apple Mail is really terrible and this was a really good effort and now it doesn't exist anymore. So. <laughs> and, and this is something that people paid for so there's a little bit of a backlash because I guess this, this is only four months old from what I'm reading um, and, and there's people that bought it now they're not getting any updates you know like your developer he's not going to be able to use it anymore because there's no more updates. Um, so are, do people have a right to be mad about this? Um, that bought it? The, the the end of life kind of thing is kind of kind of lame. I mean, it's still going to work, yeah. but development has ceased, which means that if, if Gmail were to change something about the way that Sparrow was accessing its data, that could shut down the client, which is sort of, it's like a, it's an unsaid thing when you buy software that interfaces with something else, which is, should we cease development, this thing that you paid money for might stop working. Yeah. Because there's always the point where like something's going to change, like with Gmail, or if you were a t- Twitter client, Twitter will change something at some point, and you need somebody to continue to develop it in order to make sure it does stay alive. Yeah, and so. the unfortunate thing, I mean, I guess here it's a question of what money exchange hands where. Because so, if you bought this thing when it first came out, you know you're not sweating it too much. But let's say you bought this a week before the acquisition. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of lame. It's like buying a gallon of milk. And then that like had the wrong date on it, so it's expired as soon as you get it home. Like, there's some a little shady there, and you feel like there should be some recompense. But who's like whose court does that fall into? Does that fall into mm-hmm. Google mm-hmm. now because they bought them, or does it fall into nobody's hands because there's that unsaid thing? At the same time, like I understand and you understand that this is a thing that happens. But hypothetically, say your mom bought this application. She's not going to want to hear any of this like developer acquisition nonsense. She's going to want to check her email. Exactly, exactly. That's kind of beyond, and, you know. And this is the kind of thing that we fear. That a lot of people fear that are transitioning from having box copies of, say, even video games uh, and their software and everything to go into okay, everything's digital because something like this can happen. Um, and there's a lot of interesting from this Verge article we have linked here. Um, there's a lot of interesting quotes from around the development com- community. Um, you know, something like like uh, David Bernard, who uh, is founder of App Cubby, another another development team for uh, Launch Center Pro. I says the age of selling software to users at a fixed one time price is coming to an end. For one thing, mm-hmm. so maybe this is something we don't expect. And then then again, how many times? What what is the turnover on your phone? I, and it, maybe we're not the greatest case for this because we're kind of 
you know, I just downloaded four new apps today. I went and try out for different things, you know, but, but for us, I think we lose like four months and an app doesn't work anymore. And that's not a big thing for us. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's definitely true. You don't pay attention, but there are, I feel like there are core use usability type applications like checking your mail. Like people get angry when a Twitter client changes, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and people get upset when a mail client changes, but like I bought, I spent so angry. I spent, uh, four dollars on a weather app last week um turns out turns uh, out turns out it's awful <laughs> and and that even though it looks really cool it only provides you Ooh. in three days it it gives me the next three hours the overnight forecast the morning forecast and then the afternoon forecast and nothing past that you didn't buy swack it did you no i bought dark skies and it's very pretty it is the prettiest <laughs> radar i have ever seen but man, this is not worth four dollars. So anyway, like uh, to to get us out of this hole here, um, I spent four dollars on this, and that's my mistake. Um, because I really hope somewhere in the description it says, "P.S. You're only going to get tomorrow's forecast with this." You know, and I, th um, th this isn't the first situation like this. I, I've even had like um, programs that like that I've paid five dollars for. Remember, Orb was something that would take uh, videos I had stored on my computer and it would stream it to my iPhone. They uh, they cut, they cut uh, uh, the main one. They they only offered a ten dollar one, and I couldn't update my app anymore. And of course, now it's changed with iCloud. Uh, now, um, and, and the old one I paid five dollars for wasn't even compatible anymore. And I actually was able to go, you know, to Apple and say, "Hey, they changed this. I don't think this is cool. I have no problem buying their higher one. I just can I get my money back for this?" And at least Apple is good about this. I bet if a lot of people complain, they're Sparrow users, especially those ones that are from a week ago that bought this thing, they'll be able to get their money back. That, that's true. I mean, is this... Um, <clears throat> was Sparrow solely available through the App Store, or is this a uh, download as well? Um, I'm not sure. Because if it's through the App Store, then there is, you know, there's that second level of defense, which is Apple. Uh, but if you just, you know, if you PayPal'd him 10 bucks or whatever, and you got a DMG in your inbox, like there's, there's nothing there. That's all on the developer yeah. who is now owned and operated by Google. Yeah. I don't even know. Uh, yeah. It looks like Sparrow for Mac. I'm on the website now. Uh, yeah, this is through the Mac. Uh, at least the links they have right now are through the Mac store exclusively nine ninety nine. So you, you pay $10 for this thing. And they also do have a link for, um, the iPhone version. Let's see how much that is. That's actually two ninety nine, which is, you know, as far as apps go, that's, you know, I mean, it seems funny, you know, you know, crying about a $3 application that, that you're losing, but you know, it, it's still, it's, it's, you paid for it. You, you stuck up for it, you know, it, and there's a lot of applications you don't have to. Well, so maybe this could be an argument for the app store, you know, because when we first started going into this app store, um, uh, environment for desktop applications like with OS X, a lot of people were a little upset saying, you know, they'd rather have the DMG in their inbox, like the same thing that you would rather have, uh, you know, a CD or whatever with uh, an actual copy of the software on. So you have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. But maybe uh, this is an argument for the App Store in that there is now a second level that can take care of you in the event that the developer disappears, it's, they cease development, or they're acquired. It's like an insurance policy. Yeah, yeah, for your exactly. for your applications. So you know, uh, and that that's really cool. And also, I mean, it is really nice. Like I said, I got a got this Mac Mini here a few uh, about a month ago, and it was so nice to just log in and have all my software. I mean, it was literally just log in. This is most of the stuff I use anyways. It's already bought through the Mac store, you know, including, you know, thankfully I'm on like Final Cut and stuff that like that that are Apple products. But there's a couple other things like Evernote, stuff like that. Go in, download. I'm good to go. Check back in about an hour. I'm just about ready to just start doing work on this thing. Right. That's tremendous. So uh, what do you think, Norm? I, I don't know how much you caught. I know you dropped out there for a moment uh, about uh, Sparrow and the App Store. Are you, would you feel burned if you dropped it? Did you bought, drop money on something like Sparrow? Can you hear me? Doesn't look like it. I don't think he can hear me. All right, <laughs> let's move on to the next one here. Uh, Rob, what else is uh, is uh, interesting you out of the list here uh, so I can go check on Norm here? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Verizon and Redbox actually was 
man, would have helped if I read some of the articles, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you now. There he is. There he there is. There he is. Hey, Rob, wait, wait, we're, I, I don't know how much you could hear before, but we're talking about Sparrow and how they got pulled out. Do you have any uh, any thoughts on it? Not too much. You know, I don't use Gmail too much, so mm-hmm. I, I never really got into Sparrow. Um, and I was just I was just looking at their they, – they released a letter. Uh, I don't know if you looked at that or not. I saw you had the homepage up at one point. But they mm-hmm. said they are offering support still, so if you pay for it, you might not be totally out of luck. That's good. That's good. And, and, that, and I think that's all we ask as, as far as uh, if you were to pay for this. So, But it, still, you're not going to see quite as much development probably. So – I don't know. Well, who knows? Google could come out with you know their own thing and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you know. and I think the expectation is this is going to get. I mean, they they bought the team there. I think is it. I think it's they're definitely yes. Yeah, it says right here we're joining the Gmail team. So I think you're just going to see a lot of the features kind of integrated into the free Gmail app from now on. So I think it, you know, great. That's what I use. So um, why not? So all right, uh, Rob, did you see something you want to talk about there? Not really. No, not really. So moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, here's another acquisition uh, one uh, that, that's kind of interesting. Facebook acquires Acrylic, the team behind Mac and iOS newsreader Pulp. Pulp? Pulp. pulp like P-U-L-P, like orange used pulp? Yeah. Which, uh, which looks like it's like a Flipboard competitor. I think I remember seeing this pop up a little bit after Flipboard. Uh, there's there's a picture of it there, uh, both on on a on a MacBook and a, a um, iPad. Hmm. So uh, you know this this is Facebook. You know buying more stuff that looks pretty. Um, yeah, I mean they've like we talked about when they acquired. Uh, Instagram is that like Instagram was kind of a big deal because a lot of people use it, but realistically, Facebook acquires a new company like every other week at this point. Yeah, it seems like it. They, they bought Face.com. They bought Instagram uh, what a month ago before the IPO. Yeah, I mean acquisitions are part of the tech atmosphere. It's what they do. Mm-hmm. This is suddenly this has become the acquisition show. You realize that? <laughs> yes, it's kind of who um, bought who 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 get this week, huh? I mean, but, uh, but it's cool so, stuff. You know, the so, question here is if they're acquiring for product or if they're acquiring just for talent. If they really just wanted the people who work there and like the stuff that they're working on and they want them to work on something internally at Facebook, if they wanted to shut them down because it was doing something that they didn't like, which is probably not very likely. Uh, or if they want to, you know, maybe there's a division of Facebook that's working on making their mobile app not suck. Oh, it's been horrible. Out, so. It's been horrible lately. Oh, it doesn't even make sense. Why can't I at least do the things I can do on the website, you know? It's not like it's too complicated, right? Right. Right? So bad. It's so <laughs> incredibly bad. And then why do I need that Facebook Pages app? So I don't have to dig through the clutter in the regular app, I guess? I don't know. It's Like, this app sucks so much that instead of adding another layer onto the parfait, we decided to give you an entirely different parfait. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, we'll see what else we got here. Other changes to YouTube. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, it, so, YouTube apparently already offers when you when you uh, start a new account that it can link you up and use your real name instead of uh, whatever you know whatever screen name you use. Like, I'd really love to get to get rid of that old YouTube account name. Um, and they're finally rolling it out to people um, that are already YouTube. Uh, users, uh, so this is going to link you with the Google Plus, which is, um, you know, going to be your real name. So, is this going to uh, end uh, YouTube nasty comments? Nope. No. Haters no? going to hate. Haters going to hate, even when their real names attached to it. When you're taking away the anonymity. Yeah. I. You don't think it's at least going to be lessened a little bit? No. Why not, Charge? You're still so... the internet. These comments are still happening on the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not going to deter anyone from doing anything that they wouldn't normally do on the internet. Mm -hmm. People leave comments on CNN, MSNBC, and all that every day. And say, yeah, I mean, mean, the the best point to make here would be every website in which you use your Facebook account to make comments on. And like every stupid thing you've seen on Facebook, even as like groups and stuff that are incredibly like hateful or. 
you know, offensive or whatever, people don't seem to be as bashful as we would like them to be about uh, being horrible people. So, I, I, I unfortunately, I, I think Chachi's right. I don't think this is really going to deter too many people. <laughs> I, I would just like to clarify that he's saying, unfortunately, because of the circumstances, not because I said it. <laughs> yeah. That I think is. that remains to be seen there. Um, but, yeah, I, I, it's that's completely the point. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, usernames don't stop people from being uh, um, insensitive pricks now, so... Uh, real names, real names. We're talking. Well, no, I mean, usernames don't stop people from from being insensitive now, and real names aren't going to do anything about it. Okay, so because so, I mean, chances of you have to look at it this way. Regardless of what's said, it's still said on the internet, mm-hmm. and there's still a detachment. Because I know a lot of people. I know a lot of discussions I have, like especially kids and stuff. It's people that don't understand that anybody can see your Facebook and the stupid things that you say. Right. And they say mm-hmm. things about people or their parents when they're friended them. Yeah. You know, there's like that that detachment, you know. And unfortunately, a lot of them have to learn the wrong way or the hard way. Um, well, I mean, the, the way they're looking at it is, oh, I just flamed this dude on the Internet. He's not going to come track me down and do anything. Yeah. And there have been cases where... Um, you know, news networks or whatever will track down somebody who is like blatantly racist and like the worst, most horrible, bigoted individual you could have ever met on the internet and is like a total like cyber bully, quote unquote. And they will track this person down and approach them and be like, Why are you such a booty boop on the internet? What is your problem? And the response is, It's the internet. I'm allowed to say whatever I want. Get off my back. Yeah, yeah, and you're gonna have that. I, but I think I think it will uh, it will lessen that slightly. I don't. I think it's slightly because I, I think there are a lot of people that do hide behind that anonymity and that and that fake name, like you know Joy Killer Twenty Seven. You know, that's not gonna you know the, that's gonna be taken away. Although you don't really have enough. they give you the option to go under your real name. I bumped my mic, so I bumped it. <laughs> it's not like Facebook comments where you're required. So no, it's it's not I, gonna. Mm-hmm. Yeah, normally Face- Facebook's really desensitizing us to to all that too, you know, with our real name. And um, mm-hmm. I think unless you, you know, like on my Twixie, we moderate everything, so we can't do that. And unless you have a moderation system that that filters out the trolls, then um, then you're going to have it. And I think yeah, you're right. As we as this younger generation comes online, who is used to just spewing whatever they want without reckless abandon on Facebook or anywhere. Yeah, you're, you're, I think you're totally right. Who cares? Um, I, I think the the older folks who are who are, who want to not be completely transparent online, or at least believe that they're not transparent online, you know, that's that's who who's gonna um, probably you know kind of feel the most. Uh, what do I want to say? Uh, offensive or be offended by this, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And how are you? Uh, is I talk to you under? Uh like uh, anonymity. So, yeah. Well, we well, you're not allowed to share personal information uh, mm-hmm. because most of our users are under the age of 13. We protect their identities, and that's one of that's one of our um, you know kind of guidelines. Like you're not allowed to share your last name yeah. or your location, and so you're required to have a, a, a username. You can share your first name, um, but uh, we 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 definitely protect the identity of our users uh, because they're children. So. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's kind of nice because, well, I think technically, uh, has Facebook has Facebook officially lowered their their thing to thirteen? I don't think they have yet. No, it's a government regulation. It's it, a huge, it is huge deal. Yeah, uh, and you know, we go through a lot of hoops to make sure that we're regulated properly. So mm-hmm. um, you know, you can't just you can't just gather data on individuals under that under the age of twelve without some pretty intense certification and a, what what happens is, is a lot of the kids a lot of the kids lie about their age it's really easy to lie about your age online obviously mm-hmm. including facebook and facebook knows it so i mean that's one of the reasons why they're kind of pushing for this it's interesting what what they're doing or what they're trying to do i think that their the intentions are in the right place but it's going to be nearly impossible for them to actually execute it especially the way the current laws are definitely definitely so um, hey, let's, let's turn us away from from things getting acquired to something that might be acquired someday. Um, 
this is one is at the bottom of your dock, guys, if you want to check this out uh, on your side. It's a Viclone, V-Y clone. I think that's dot com here. Um, this is an app I saw uh, mentioned kind of in passing on another show I was watching today. And uh, it's kind of interesting. It, it So basically you connect. I think it uses Facebook from I haven't played with it too much, but I was looking at some samples here. So basically the idea of this is, you know, I got an iPhone. I have this app. I'm filming, you know, their big thing is like, say you're at a concert or something, uh, you know, completely stealing the music. Uh, they're live. Um but the idea is, like, if I'm filming and say Chachi has an iPhone and he's filming, like, the same the same event and other people are sil- filming the same event, you can pull it together uh, afterwards and edit it. And it's all synced up. Yeah, I see a whole video up here and you'll see it'll go back and forth. So... This could have some really, and there's another sample here where there was uh, somebody interviewing and they were doing different camera angles and like they were showing off pandas or something like that. And they were showing like the crowd, you know, there's maybe like three cameras kind of jumping around here. And, and if you watch the video, this music is all synced up amongst them. And, and, and I guess on the back end, you know, after you've uh, uh, all done your video, you can pull them together and, and edit and do, do, the, do the switches between the cameras and everything and, and pick the audi- audio. Um, and I know we talked about, uh, a few weeks ago, like, uh, you know, like, I think it's the Wii video. There's like the online cloud one. This is kind of an interesting, interesting application. There's a lot of, I think there'd be a lot of cool things you can do with this thing. What do you think, Rob? Uh, <laughs> hang on a second. <laughs> That's Rob's, I wasn't paying attention. Rob really. was doing <laughs> texts from dogs, apparently, saying them to Chachi. Chachi, what do you think? I just think it's another useless app. <laughs> no, seriously. Okay. It, it's going to turn into another Instagram. It'll get bought and people use it and there'll be people that just blast it on the internet. You don't think this is something that could be uh, a cool application for events? Nope. Okay. Uh, I don't see it being used the way it's supposed to be used. What do you think? Oh, that. Okay, I'm, I'm back on the same page. All right. Um, I was I was irrelevantly researching RFID technology while you were talking about Viclone. Um, I, I think Chachi's kind of right. That's that's two in one show. Um, oh man! Oh, wow! Write this one down. I think I'm going with it is, the sound It's a right. very it's a very extremely niche application. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not something that's going to kick off like Instagram because uh, anything that requires like for functionality. For it to be like really cool and useful requires a group of people to come together and cooperate. <laughs> as much as that is the internet and social media as a whole, for it to produce like the end product that makes it fun. Whereas like I can use Instagram on my own and not care. Um, so, that's what kind of makes this hard to sell. So, so it'll be popular, sure. It's a cool thing, but it's hard to explain. It's hard to sell. It has like. As somebody who, like, some of the content that we develop for trade shows and that kind of stuff are based around the idea of this sort of thing where you're taking content from hundreds of different sources and putting it into one place to make it, like, a more useful storytelling device. Um, And this is certainly useful for that. But that's marketing. Like, you know, if you get all the stuff from your friends together to make these clips and videos... Um, nobody's really going to care. Like, it might last a couple <laughs> months, and then you move on to, oh, yeah, Facebook is easier. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. So so your problem is the reliance on, on other people to get this done. Yeah, and it's not, you know, it's not anything bad about the app. It's just the nature of people. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. You have like, to if, be I, with if, with if in order for me to make movie, Sandwich A, can you just be with you to give me the peanut butter or Sandwich B... I already have the mayonnaise. I'm going to make the one with mayonnaise. Sorry, what was that, Norm? Do you have to be in the same location? Like, can you just be in the same location as other people, or do you have to be friends with people in order to clap I don't think I don't think you're required to be friends with the people because uh, the little bit I've tinkered around with it, of course, and I don't, I didn't have any friends today to to play with it alongside or anything like that. Um, but it looks like you can pick up from other people that are around you and maybe be able to pull that stuff together. 
Um, hey, well, uh, when are we when are we getting together next? I mean, it's not like we've got an event coming up or anything. No, no. Oh, hey. Sorry, Maybe see if Rob really uh, does get down to the bottom of the scorpion. Uh, we can all have a, some some fun views of that. There you go. Everybody's got an iPhone. Well, this is this is iOS only. It looks like from the site. Uh, I don't I don't I don't see Mezcal in my future. That's not that's not how I roll. <laughs> I don't know. We'll let Viclon be the judge of that. Mm. Hey, I, I got to read this quote uh, from All Things Digital. Viclon is fun as heck to use. There you go. That's it. Done. That's it. Forget it. I'm wrong. All Soul. things D threw it down. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah, no, this is this is one of those things. Um, I, I think people like us that are have creative ways to use it and are thinking of how can I use these different tools. But yeah, I don't think this is going to be a very public thing unless something gets behind it. Like, like kind of like what we're seeing right now with WWE and Tout that we're talking about, you know, you know, last week. Like, unless like a concert, like I don't know not clear channel who what are they now live nation or 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 some some band or something like that gets behind it and says hey all of you guys take some videos and you can all do this using this app you know or or some other event you know or some other you know something like maybe an e3 or something or not not an e3 maybe a comic con you know takes this app and says hey everybody use this and we can do a real cool thing with this afterwards you know um yeah i I don't see it, it hitting the public other other than that though so you're right, um, but I'll play with it in the meantime while it's still around. So, all right, what time is it? Seven forty-seven. Um, so you guys, I, I don't think we talked about this last week. I might have had this mark to talk about, but uh, so you see, Comcast Xfinity Platinum package is going to give a ridiculous three hundred and five megabytes per second. But, 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 hmm. <laughs> I read that wrong. I read that as a cap, not a speed. No, that's a speed. That is their their speed offering. All right, let Apparently. me just. Oh, fuck, I almost said a bad good. word. Three oh five oh, down and sixty five up. I and it's going to be uh, specifically in their northeast divisions. That's up here in the uh, definitely in the Pittsburgh in the uh, you know uh, New York City. Boston, whatever areas, I bet it's only in areas where you have FiOS to contend with, who just up their speeds. Yeah, and it's also, I mean, it's obviously business focused. It's like you're getting this, or you're dead or getting a dedicated. Yeah, that's uh, that's the high know, one. Compete speed wise, you're looking at an IS, ISDN line, probably something like that, a three T three. Mm-hmm. People still use T threes. I don't even know. <laughs> um, that's not, but no, this is not something you're going to stick in your living room because no, the other part no. of this is. Like, so the servers I run, you go ahead and try and talk to my server at 100 or 305 megabits a second. You let me know how that works out because <laughs> you're not getting it. Nope. Nope. Um, yeah. I've got it, the bandwidth, but I have to divvy that stuff out. And this, this is this is a $300 a month plan. This is somebody, if you're doing a lot of stuff, you have a lot of computers talking the internet. This is, you know it, what this is good for? This is good for, I have this at my house and I have this at my office and it means I've got a Drobo on my desk in my office that I can get data from. Exactly, exactly. And this is to compete with Verizon's uh, 300 megabyte uh, FiOS quantum internet service. Uh, How much does that cost? That, I don't see a price for that one. So, but yeah, it's just a, it's a competition thing, and it's yeah, for businesses. Yeah. And they're and it's also not a big deal. and they're also uh, doubling their uh, internet tiers. The uh, uh, Xfinity Blast has increased from twenty five to fifty megabytes per second. The Extreme Fifty customers will now get one hundred and five megabytes per second. Um, it's launching the Xfinity platform uh, with those upgrades this week in Boston, Hartford, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. That's us. Hey, Harrisburg, hey. Harrisburg, Wilmington, Baltimore, and Washington DC, Richmond, and New Jersey. I put the and in the right, wrong place. So, so, so this means that my internet's going to get faster. Is that what that means? I guess so. I guess hey, so. Do you, do you even have, do you even have Fios as an alternative in your neighborhood? I don't believe so. So I, I, I wonder even if they, will it be a broad thing for the city or will it just be, oh, you might be going to Fios? Here, we have this thing. Mm. You know? Because it, it's so sad that you only get speeds like this. I mean, AJ's down in uh, wherever the hell, uh, North Richmond, Carolina. North, Carolina. North Carolina, one of those states down there. I keep forgetting. They all mesh what together in my states? head. North Dakota, right? Um, no, uh, but no. I mean, he's he's experiencing this right now. Like we've had him on Skype a few times. We've had him on Hangout, and his Time Warner cable's been like horrendous. 
you know, and I don't think he has much for alternatives down there. I don't so. even know if my, you know, it's a fun thing to do. Go to speedtest.net while you're on a podcast. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you actually have. So well, I don't know why I've dropped out a number of times today. Yeah. yeah. You're on Comcast, aren't you? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I don't have any problem. That's the weird. It's, I mean, it's very inconsistent as a problem because I have zero problems with my Comcast. Okay, me as well. Yeah, I'm not complaining. Actually, I'm surprised it happened. So I wonder if there's something else going on. Yeah, but so, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't have any complaints about the internet speed. Mm-hmm. There are their cable service kind of flows, but right now, while I'm doing a podcast, I'm getting 18 megabytes down and 2.5 megabytes up. Oh, I, I would love. I, I'm sure I'm doing like under five since I have so many streams going on right now with you guys. Um, it would probably it'd probably degrade everybody's uh, Skype as well. So, yeah, basically a bigger hose, but the same water pressure. Says uh, Sonic Screwdriver. Mm. And there you go. There you go. That goes with our tubes thing we were talking about earlier, Chach. Yep. So. And you know, sometimes people just buy stuff just because it's on sale. Yeah. Well, like, um, like a lot of the crappy electronics that are out there. You know, just because it's on the shelf, people are going to pay for it. So, um, you know, this could be just an offering to pick up some of their high-end customers, uh, you know, people who, who, you know, don't really care. They just want the fastest connection they can get. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like the, uh, the, I forget the name of the movie, American, uh, Never mind, forget it. Let's, let's just move on. <laughs> moving on, moving on. All right. Uh, hey, back to video games. Um, this was interesting. So, Dead Trigger is now free on Android due to, quote, unbelievably high piracy rate. It's still Ooh. 99 cents on the iPhone App Store, if you're interested. Now, this is a zombie game. It's uh, I think it's a first person shooter from what I was seeing. I don't know. It's still 99 cents for me, so I didn't buy it yet. Um, How is it being pirated? On Android, on you it. can uh, hack and share the uh, APK file. It's just like pass around files on a PC, right? Yeah. Of a game at that rate. It, it well, allows you to tell the phone that you paid for something that you didn't. Mm-hmm. So, so they just completely dropped it off um, price wise because they weren't getting anything off of it. It's only on Android that they're doing that. You still have to pay 99 cents for it on iPhone. Yes, yes. Um,. It, it, and it's not even going to be a freemium app. It says all players are going to be able to play without in-app purchases. So I, I guess this is just a good faith thing to say, hey, stop stealing our crap. I, or, or is this the pirate? The pirates won. And is this a is this a a, a, a big call for people to get on uh, iOS, which has DRM that isn't getting hacked all that much, except for that Russian guy? Uh, I think that um, I think this rides like a really interesting line because so the the thing is is it ninety nine cents anywhere you get it or it's nine ninety nine cents on on the iPhone on the iPhone free now free on the Android and I don't know well, how much this was before they maybe they brought even brought it down on iOS because my question would be how much was it on Android because like we've said before because I like to quote books. Um, uh, piracy uh, is is basically indicative of a market that should exist but doesn't. Mm-hmm. So, like in the event of music, we found out that um, you know music piracy for the most part, yes, it still exists. Uh, but for the most part, music piracy was a result of people saying, "I don't want to pay sixteen dollars for a CD. I don't want to pay sixteen dollars for an album." but I'm very willing to pay 99 cents a track. And Apple figured that one out, and that's why iTunes is the most successful music marketplace there is. Mm -hmm. So in the event of game piracy, it's usually somebody saying, I don't want to pay 20 bucks for this thing, I want to pay 5 bucks for this thing. Or I don't want to pay 5 bucks, I want to pay 99 cents for this thing. So it could have just been a matter that like the people decided, the people, all of us, decided that they didn't want to pay whatever it was for that game, so piracy ruled out. I would also wonder why it was so easy to pirate a game on a mobile device. Like, how is that happening? Yeah. Uh, it, normally, you take the APK file from someone who bought the game or modified the, reprogrammed a part of that file, mm. and then you just share that file. So then we have we have a, a tangential argument that is that it might be too easy to pirate things on Android because it's a quote unquote open platform. Correct. 
Yeah, I think that's what we're going to here. Because really, I mean, if you're if you're, if you're like, I don't want to pay the ninety nine cents for something that looks like. I mean, this has been labeled on the uh, on the articles I'm finding. I'm trying to track down the the price. I, I haven't seen it being more than a dollar at any point here. Um, yeah. And but, then the other question is: so the the people who are pirating it, regardless of whatever it costs or whatever, it, because it's apparently pretty easy to pirate. The question is, is it worth more to spend the time pirating the software or is it worth more to uh, actually pay the money to download it? And how much is that time worth to you? So then how many people who are pirating would have actually bought it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's ridiculous for like a dollar thing like this. I mean, because yeah, like how many people and, and got, download music nonstop, mm -hmm, but they're mm -hmm. never gonna pay for those albums. Like, a, no matter how cheap they are, downloaded this. They they barely played. It. It's just part of the games they packed their their Android device they hacked in with. Um, yeah. and, and it did get a little bit of press because everything I'm seeing here, one, this is by the makers of Shadow Gun. That's pretty popular, and it was being labeled as a uh, alternative to uh, uh, Call of Duty Zombies. So, yeah. and, and it, from the looks of it, it looks like a full. It, were you grabbing this, Chach? Uh, no, no. It was. I, I tried. It was a little too big, wasn't it? Yeah, I had. I downloaded uh, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, and that was which, like a gig and a half. Yeah, which <laughs> was uh, uh, one point seven gigs, and I have a lot of stuff on my phone. Yeah. So that pretty much filled up my phone. So as soon as I get rid of that, I'll probably download this. But yeah, yeah. So and I'm kind of curious now. Hey, maybe they'll sell more a little bit more on uh the iOS side, just from the, the publicity, um, but yeah, I mean, it, look, it looks pretty good from what I'm seeing so far. So oh. that's interesting. What if it was a whole just a publicity stunt, like somebody <laughs> within the company released a hack and and oh look at me! <laughs> just, just so, oh, until we're getting pirated. Why don't you buy it on the iPhone, please? While we're making a statement about the Android development piracy, yeah, that's pretty good because you know we wouldn't be talking about this app if they hadn't done it. No, we wouldn't be. <laughs> And now it's front page on well, Ars Technica and the rest of the stuff. Because if it is, it's brilliant. I like it. I might steal it. <laughs> Thinking outside Further. the box. Way to go, guys. All right, guys. With that, I think we need to wrap up here. We got Let's Play coming up next where we're talking more about video games. Less newsy, though. More more the love of video games. Is that how we can describe it there, Chach? Yeah, that's fair enough. Kind of like, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like video game fans talking about video game things, not necessarily video game news. Right. Exactly. Nice. Can you tell them where you can find that? Insert coin to begin com. There you go. What else you got going on, Josh? News. No, what? Lots of news. Where at? Insert coin to begin com. What about the other stuff you do? I don't do anything else. You do other things. Unsung. We talked about I, Batman. I do unsung. You do unsung? Yes. And we talked about Batman. Yeah, we did talk about Batman. Where did we talk about Batman at? Pittsburgh on video org. No, but where was the Batman? The Batman? Yes. Oh, that was up to Toonzium. Thank you very much. You're confusing Man, me. Like, uh, you're confusing me with your misleading your questions. Your plugs are like pulling teeth. Rob De La Craze at robjdlc.com. I don't yep. talk about myself. <laughs> Ever. Rob, you wow. can talk about yourself if I you want I talk about to. Rob. Mm. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, on the internet. RobJDLC on the Twitter. I'm also at iontank.com. Because that's the thing now. You can plug it now. I'm going to start putting that I at the bottom. I can plug it now, and we're going to have, uh, as time goes on, we will have more fancy things on our fancy website because I just bought a fancy new camera. Nice. Go check that out, iontank.com. No. Norm Hughesman. You're, you're at different places. I'm, I've got so many emails, it's, it's ridiculous. No. Um, I, I'm now on Viclone. You can find me on Viclone.com. <laughs> Good, Mr. friend Derby. me on there, and we can we can film tomorrow's event. And yes, somebody we'll, try it, we'll try it out for sure. We'll, we'll try it when Rob eats the scorpion. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I work for iTwixy, which is a social network for tween girls, and uh, we're keeping tween safe online and happy and healthy and fun. And uh, you can also find me at normanhillsman.com. And don't forget about PodCamp Pittsburgh at PodCampPittsburgh.com. And come out to our PodCamp 7 kickoff party tomorrow Woo! night at the Warner Cantino. Lucky number seven. That's right. Uh, exactly. And, of course, I'm, I'm not Chachi. You I'm not are Chachi. not. No. <laughs> I am. I'm you over at Sorgatron.com where I'm blogging things. Hey, I'm on tout. I'm touting things. I'm a touter. That is not a verb. It is now. No, it's not. John Cena said it. He said he touted. Um, go check that out. Uh, and of course, everything else going on at sorgatronmedia.com. I will be at 
Sorgatron Media will be at the Steel City Con this weekend. Stop trying new things. Along with the original Robin, Burt Ward. Okay, it's not the original, I guess. They, there was the serial ones before that. But what these I'm getting pointed at. I'm getting pointed at. Uh, but no, yeah, go check that out. We'll be there uh, selling uh, IWC, RWA DVDs and talking to people, handing out uh, Wrestling Mayhem show stickers, stuff like that. Uh, so please go check that out. We're also, this show, you can find more at awesomecast.com. Take contact, your pants off. Contact at awesomecast.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Uh, hit us on Facebook, Google+, uh, iTunes, Blip TV, on your Roku box on the Blip app. And uh, Stitcher, of course, please rate us, share us with your friends, review us. However, help get the word out if you dig this show. Thanks, Norm, for joining us. Rob Daler, Kreda, and Chachi, as always. Uh, thanks to our awesome chat room. They've been hopping all night. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Yes! Yeah, yes! What? Mr. Clean and Soul Calibur. They, so wait, will you have a mop or something? Yes. All right. And one uh, one of his weapons would be a mop, and then if you figured out the button combination, it would be a spray of doom. Like he'd bust out a spray bottle and it'd blind you for like 10 seconds, allowing you to do like mad, com mad combos. I dig that. I really dig that. Oh, probably have to turn him up. Hello. Hello. There he is. Flipping. Flipping. Come to you from the internet. There he is. There's your shot right there. Now let me uh do that. There you go. <laughs> Why is Chachi wearing those glasses? They're my stunner shades. Stunner shades. Do you want me to take them off? Are they insulting you? They're not insulting me. I was just completely unaware of how much swag you had. Oh, oh shit. Oh, yeah, my swag count is high, yo. <laughs> my swag count is high. Hello? I, wish I, was I would just like to clarify that I equate my swag count to the amount of tweets I've sent out. Mm. <laughs> really? That's all it takes? Is that how that works? I mean, just like Listen, I, I added, uh, this is the day where I s wasted more time at work. Listen, therefore, swag day. Exactly. But, um, swag day. I am entirely too white to have any real swag. Was okay. that? All right. Uh, this is short. Was that a checker white? Yes, it was. Me? Let's see. Hold on. Let's see what number 21 is. Oh, my. Whoa. With a pullback and a bounce. I've had these in my back pocket the whole time. I just haven't had a reason to use them. You and should use them. And a bounce use is exactly what I need to your mom last night. Whoa. Boom. Boom. Man. And the funny thing is, he said that we said ooh and glass shattered in the song. It all fits together. Uh, so for some reason, I wrote uh, money on a note card. It's pink, and I circled it. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are in fact turning into Merlin. <laughs> So good. Not that song. Oh wait, good. wait! I'm sorry. That deserves a transition. <laughs> was that the song you were singing, Rob? I bet no, it was. I, told, I it said it was classic rock. That's classic something. It's not classic anything. <laughs> no, it's crap. This is offensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we back to our regular transitions. Oh, they, uh, no, man. use the use yeah, the so fancy I do, ones. I do all of all of the Merlin isms, mm -hmm. and my developer does not listen to Merlin at all. But since he and I uh, spend way too much time together, and we're like brothers to the point where we incidentally end up like ordering the same thing, and I can have conversations with him that are like, "Hey, did you put the thing in the thing and upgrade the thing?" And he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Now he talks like Merlin as a result of hanging out with me. Well, that's fine for Sorg, but. Um... So, like, our boss will say something. I gotta say, like, hey, so what do you think I about just this met thing? you. And I'll go. This and he goes, crazy. Hmm. He's like, huh, hmm, hmm, huh.
Mm. Ah. Mm. Huh. And he mm. has no idea what he's doing. It's great. <laughs> he just picked up mannerisms, which you just just brought over from the other thing. That's tremendous. Yeah, right. And nobody knows what we're talking about. We should say we should at least say back to work under our breath just to give him a like a sure. like a like a the like a part, foot I like a mid to start listening footnote. to it and then they're like, "Hey, so I just realized that like half of the things you say come out of Merlin's mouth." And I'm like, "Yeah." Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm hey. Am I supposed to be putting graphics up in that corner? It looks like you're set up for a newscast. <laughs> <laughs> Do like, it. Like, it looks like what I set Do up it. to for. Run. Coming down <laughs> from my ceiling. There you go. Wait, I, 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 I'm going to go ahead and take a guess and say that it's caused by a fan of some sort. Wow, that was clever. Not what I was going for, but clever indeed. Mm. I'm going to punch you in the beard. Punch you in the beard. beard. You're going to get beard punched, son. Beard punch. Beer punch. I guess son. I should open the uh, the notes so All I know right. what you guys are going to talk about. And Don't I can know. Pretend not to care. I'm going to keep an eye on in case Norm remembers he was going to do a show with us tonight, and let's just uh, go ahead and do this. Did he forget? Did we send him a reminder? I, the... I might have forgot. I mean, I talked to him Thursday and be like, "Hey, you're on you're on Tuesday, right?" He's like, "Yeah, completely." And um, did you did you talk to him on the tutor? I did not. I DM'd him a couple of times now. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> I'm not Chachi. There we go. What, what is this? 111. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is... I hate saying that. <laughs> I hate saying ladies and gentlemen. Because that's the thing that everybody says. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this note card says that this is the awesome guy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, cross out. And that is on a yellow note card. Won't know what that means later. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one entertained by this. <laughs> I need a bell. I need a bell so bad. <laughs> you good? Did you get a hot dog? Chili dog? Uh, all right. Pump chili. Pump <laughs> chili. Yes. People. Oh. Look, I got I got a new intro. I got a new intro. Okay. Like Chachi's coming in tripping over things. Hi. I need you guys to tell me how to tell if a pear is ripe. How a pear is ripe? Yeah. Um, I'm if it's rock hard, free, it's not right. If it's soft, tree. it is right. They have a pear tree? Yeah. I do not pay attention to the neighbors in the backyard. Alright. People of the internet, this is the awesome cast 111, and my camera's shaking. Holy shit. I didn't even touch your camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? What? Fix your shit. Hey, CTO, uh, help me fix my uh, shit. Wow. 